Of course, this was one of our two main events from the prior night at SummerSlam. Kurt Angle's going to win by DQ, so Steve Austin retains his WWF world title. And we know that Booker T would drop the big gold belt to The Rock. Of course, that's the new WCW title that's being introduced into the fold. What do you think of the the big gold belt being a part of WWF programming here? Um, you know, I thought it was I thought it was right for the WCW element, you know, that that was their world championship and that that was a way for us to have two world titles. And there's Booker and his whip Goldberg starter kit. His his what starter kit? Whoopi Goldberg starter kit. Oh, when he's got the dreads or whatever. Yeah. And that some bitch has not cut those since then. She think about that. He's been growing that shit for twenty four years. When you see DDP in WWE, first of all, how about the highlights of Michael Cole's hair? Can we just talk about that? I mean, he looks like he's ready to put on a headset and go on tour with Back Streets Back. All right. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a cute little look right there. He was a goddamn he was young. But what about uh DDP? When you see DDP on WWE TV, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? It's a stalker. The first thing that comes to my mind. Look, look at him. He's stalkery. Very stalkery. You know how people can be stalkery? Just look at him. Yeah, see right there. Oh, yeah, definitely. I love DDP. Look, man, you know, I got a lot of respect for Dallas because, again, like I said at the beginning, he took a chance on himself, bet on himself. It was one of those guys who was willing to do whatever it took and try anything on and, you know, go for it. So, uh, big fan. Didn't think it always worked, but I thought that he at least was in the game. He's set up to wrestle the Undertaker's wife here tonight. Ooh, I feel bad for him there. Paige is going to claim that Sarah suggested they wrestle one another because, quote, she wants to feel her body up against mine. I'm not saying this to be funny. I'm being sincere. Is there anybody who could have made this creative work? Sure. I mean, it's just hard for me to, he's going to wrestle the undertaker's wife. Like that feels like we're setting the guy up for failure. Kind of. Why is that? So what would you have done? I don't know. I just, I don't remember ever seeing him have mixed tags before. And in this era, it doesn't feel like, I don't know. I mean, he was, I don't know why we wouldn't have just stuck with uh, the Diamond Dallas Page character that we had in WCW rather than make him a stalker. Because it was something new and it was something different that they hadn't seen before. And our audience, our audience, you know, looking at him, they didn't know who Diamond Dallas Page was. You don't really believe that. Yes, I do believe that. Again, we, you know, we, we did research. We did look at stuff. And see who they who they knew from our audience. They didn't know that. They didn't know those guys. I know you think because you you and the hardcore wrestling fans watch both shows. More WWE fans. The larger audience didn't. So when you when you do surveys and you do research and you look at things and everything, and they go, yeah, I'm not familiar with them. So when Nitro had the bigger audience, I know they don't by this point, of course, because they're no longer a thing, but I'm just saying when they did have the larger audience, you don't think those fans switched over to Monday I think night? Some of them did. Yes, absolutely. A lot of them did, but I'm telling you by this time, when you're looking at it, you would have, you'd had what three years of WCW just deteriorating to nothing. They had lost interest in the new fans, man, the, the audience, they recycle. So I just, again, there wasn't and wanted to do something new with him. Bring him in and do something different with him. Didn't work. 
but I don't know that Dallas Page coming in and, you know, his one idea was to work with The Rock. Rock already had something, so we weren't going to change everything to do that. We uh, saw Booker T walking through the backstage area, and those were people who were uh, local staffers who work in the backstage area helping get the show on the air. They were all snickering and laughing at Booker T. Booker was not happy about that. So he went to see the commissioner, Mr. Regal, who's got Tajiri by his side and he's complaining and they're sort of snickering and laughing. And well, this is when Regal breaks the news about the rocks parody of him. Booker did not understand why everyone was laughing. Now he's understanding there was a little booker before that. We saw a uh, stone cold tribute from Taz who thanked Steve Austin for bringing back the old Taz and the newsletter at the time said he must've been talking about the whining Taz that disrupted the ECW locker room because that Taz has definitely been showing his face lately. We just talked a little bit about DDP and we haven't spent much time talking about Taz. He's another guy who was an absolute top guy for ECW, but maybe never really finds a rhythm here in WWE. Why do you think that was? Why do you think Taz enjoyed more success in the WWE? Well, I think Taz had a, had a good run in WWE. Yeah. When you include commentary and all that, for sure. I mean, as an in-ring performer, I think he had a good, good run as an in-ring performer. I, again, when you, when you're talking about, Hey, God damn, man, he drew those 900 people that bingo hall. It's wow. different. Well, come on, Conrad. Don't sit there and tell me there that he drew 10,000 people every single night. He didn't. Their ratings were not good. They got kicked off the air. They went bank. You know, they didn't last long. Paul Heyman was a genius in how he packaged everything. And showed highlights and just showed the positives. But if you're going to sit there and say, oh, well, this guy drew 20,000 people every single night, every arena all over the world. He didn't. Nobody did. He, he, was, he was a guy that was a big star in a small pond. He was good. I think he had a damn good run in WWE. And if you want to compare it to, you know, ECW, it was a much better run than what he had in ECW. Unless you just unless you're just saying, well, I want to be cheered by those people. Okay, then go back to that. But I think he had a damn good run. And he, you know, it was a it was a guy that that came in, he was successful, we did things with, and then he had a hell of a run later on as a commentator. So he's a you know, he was a strong personality that you you know, he could talk. He could do things. So I do think Taz had a good run.